I have mentioned dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT, on my channel several times in the past uh, because it's something that I practice. I've been seriously practicing this for the past two and a half years or so. I have known about it for longer than that, but I have been studying it and practicing it in a concerted effort, uh, in a deliberate fashion, I should say, for the past two and a half years. I've wanted to create a video on this topic for quite a while now because not only is it something I can share with you watching this, um, and if any of it resonates with you or you think it might have a practical application in your life, then that would of course be useful, but also because I think dialectical behavioral therapy is still not quite mainstream. Many people are aware of CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy, but I find that not that many people are aware of DBT. DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, was originally created by Marsha Linehan, and she created this the long and short of it is she created it for the treatment and management of borderline personality disorder, BPD. In my opinion though, one needn't have a diagnosis, a clinical diagnosis of BPD or any other personality disorder for that matter in order to make DBT work for you. I have found in my study of it that many of the skills I've learned in this therapy are applicable to day-to-day -to -day life, interpersonal relationships, communication, uh, and just self-management, I would say, in general. So in other words, just general life skills that can improve the quality of your life. DBT offers a particular set of skills that are useful in managing intense negative emotions and um, mental anguish, black and white thinking, and intrusive thoughts and thought patterns. So those are the areas in which I have found it to be particularly helpful for me. And in full disclosure, although I have never been diagnosed with BPD, uh, when I was 19 years old, I was diagnosed with uh, Asperger's syndrome. Uh, so that I, I believe that diagnosis uh, is no longer uh, termed that. I think in 2013, don't quote me, but I believe sometime in 2013 or so, Asperger's was taken out of the DSM and replaced with ASD uh, or autism spectrum disorder. So, so anyway, um, I have found it helpful in mitigating not only the symptoms of that condition, but just in life in general, actually. Just in large part, I find DBT to be extremely uh, useful and something actionable that I can do for uh, emotional regulation, which is something with which I struggle a great deal, uh, which is to say I struggle with emotional dysregulation. So this helps me uh, a great deal. I wanted to share a particular skill because the topic of DBT is so broad. In fact, in my opinion, and I think clinicians and practitioners alike would agree to this point, I think the number one barrier to um, people practicing this particular type of therapy is the time commitment. It is an enormous time commitment, I will have to say, because it, it involves a manual that is large <laughs> and it takes a long time to learn and study. You have to be willing, in other words. You have to be, I suppose, like with any other therapy, you have to be uh, self-aware that you have a certain set of weaknesses that you want to improve upon. And uh, you have to be willing to put the time and effort uh, into this because it, it is extraordinarily time consuming. Um, but I will say the reward is, um, the reward coincides with the time put in. So in other words, I have found no more effective way to manage myself than this, uh, this type of therapy. DBT is comprised of four modules, mindfulness practice, distress tolerance, emotional regulation, and interpersonal effectiveness. So today, I would like to focus on distress tolerance, and within distress, within distress tolerance, I would like to focus on a 
particular skill called radical acceptance because it's so useful and because it's so I want to say it's simply implemented. It's not easy to do. Don't get it confused. It's very simple to implement this immediately. Uh, you can start doing this today <laughs> after you learn how to do this, but it's not to say that this is easy. None of this is easy, but um, I'm going to hopefully present it in a stepwise simple fashion so that you can have the information. Simply put, radical acceptance allows the acceptance of objective reality, the objective facts of reality, um, without responding to them or reacting to them um, in a negatively reactive way. This is where the dialectical component of DBT comes into play. Dialectical means that two seemingly opposing truths can exist at the same time. That's dialectics. For example, you can be struggling to recover from a substance addiction and you can be in active recovery, for, for in other words, um, but also experience a relapse within that recovery process. So you can be wanting to recover and working towards recovery, but also experience a relapse in the habit at the same time. Radical acceptance helps in uh, moving forward with, with the goal and beginning again. Um, rather than getting stuck and pulled down into that negative uh, trough. We can learn to observe objective reality without judging it um, or without needing to form an opinion about it. That would be a good way to look at it. And again, this of course requires practice. It might sound easy, but I assure you if you've ever practiced this, uh, it's much easier to react. It's much easier to default or autopilot and you react to a certain situation. That is what radical acceptance helps to mitigate. If, if you have misconceptions about this concept, it can be confusing, I think. So I just want to clarify that radical acceptance is not ignoring or neglecting or willfully suppressing your thoughts or feelings or emotions or reality. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It's total allowance of the feelings to exist and a complete and total acknowledgement of the objective facts. It's not approval, but it's allowance and it's complete allowance. So you're, you're facing it boldly and accepting it radically. <laughs> um, so I, I don't want people to get confused um, that this is a suppression of emotions or an avoidance. It's not avoidance. Uh, avoidance is what we're trying to avoid <laughs> by doing this. Um, so please stay with me. Um, radical acceptance is allowing whatever is to be and not acting on impulse or compulsion to have to change it or fix it. And this practice becomes simply allowing it to be there. So I want to share how I practice this skill. Step number one of practicing radical acceptance is to observe the present moment. So notice what is and that you perhaps have an immediate thought with that uh, accompanying that reality of wanting to fix it or change it or thinking, how could this happen to me? Why is this happening to me? Uh, what did I do to deserve it? Those types of intrusive thoughts. So the first step is to observe yourself questioning or resisting your reality and just notice it. Step number two is acknowledging the reality. So remind yourself that the reality is what it is and now it cannot change. It can be helpful to actually say the words out loud of whatever is. So for example, you can say out loud, I've just relapsed and I've interrupted my recovery in relapsing. I have re-engaged in the habit that I was trying to terminate and that I've relapsed now cannot be undone. So just stating the facts of reality, acknowledging reality. The next step, step number three, is examining the reason. So nothing comes from nothing. 
you, you have to look honestly at the cause that produced the result or the consequence of what has happened and be brutally honest with yourself, of course. This doesn't work if you are self-deceptive. None of this works if you're dishonest with yourself. It's not going to serve you, of course. Um, that Those are good words to live by in life in general. Um, telling the truth is much easier, always. So be honest with yourself and don't self-deceive. Um, identify the causes that created the consequence. Step number four is practice accepting. Reframe the narrative in your mind by retelling the story without uh, negative self-talk. So use accepting language. Practice accepting yourself fully as a flawed and whole being uh, because that too is the objective truth. Use accurate descriptive language uh, that doesn't include the negative self-talk. Step number five is to make a list. List the behaviors that you would engage in and then how you would practice or engage in at least one of them. So for example, if I hadn't have relapsed, instead I would have gone out for a walk in nature to get fresh air. I would have called a support system I would have called someone in my support network for moral support. I would have stood in a cold shower. List some behaviors that you would have engaged in instead of engaging uh, in the undesirable behavior. And step number six is imagine believing the unacceptable. I think one of the hardest steps, but one of the most important. Uh, you must think about what it would feel like if you could believe what you are resisting wanting to believe. So make an affirmative statement accepting what seems to be for you unacceptable in this moment. For instance, you can say, I can still move forward in my recovery efforts despite this hiccup or despite this relapse interrupting my recovery. I don't have to throw the entire process away. Um, I don't have to continue choosing to engage in the habit. And that I've relapsed doesn't mean that I am a failure or that I've failed at my recovery. Step number seven is to notice your physical body and where the breath goes, the mind goes. So begin to take slow, deliberate, deep breaths through the nose and out through the nose. And you can sustain the inhalation and then exhale and sustain the exhalation, otherwise known as box breathing. And you can practice this for several minutes to uh, calm your nervous system down and attend to the sensations that are happening in your body. And you can also practice a body scan going from the top of your head to the tips of your toes or uh, something I find very uh, helpful is cold water immersion. So just standing under freezing cold water in the shower, um, that can really help connect me to my physical body and it can alter my uh, experience um, in a positive way. So that's something that I practice as well. Step number eight is to let your emotions exist. Uh, simply allow yourself to feel. And that seems, um, that seems obvious perhaps, but I, I think a lot of people suppress their emotions and they don't let themselves cry, for instance. They see it as a weakness. They don't let themselves feel any intense emotions whatsoever. Um, they are numbing constantly looking to numb it with behaviors, substances, distractions with the phone, any kind of, you know, anything to not feel. <laughs> so this usually the resistance to feeling the way we feel is why we turn to maladaptive coping mechanisms in the first place. Um, we self-destruct, in other words, we self self-destructive behaviors or we self-sabotage. So. Um, this practice of allowing yourself to feel emotions without the need to push them away or the thought to resist them or fight them somehow. Most times I find that that resistance to the thoughts or the feelings actually prolongs my suffering. Step number nine is to acknowledge that distress or dis-ease is a part of life. And just reminding yourself of that, um, being grateful for life itself. 
list five things that you're grateful for and they they don't have to be deep it can be as simple as having clean running water or having electricity having internet access access to information um, the breath loved ones fresh air nature flowers you get the idea the last step is not really a step but it is the question of what happens if i've done all the previous steps to radical acceptance and i still can't accept what if I still resist? And in this instance, my advice would be to write a list of the costs or the cons and the benefits or the pros to resisting. Write down exactly what you would benefit from or what it would cost you to stay without accepting, to stay in defiance or opposition of radical acceptance. Because I promise you, there is a benefit to to the other side of it as well as there is usually a tremendous cost write it down in a column uh, one column being the pros and one column being the cons the skill of radical acceptance is not meant to eliminate pain i want to make that very clear it's meant to quite literally it was intended to save your life in the most dire of situations this skill is meant to um, not eliminate pain because of course that's impossible as long as we are having the privilege of being alive and existing. Life is an ongoing painful stressful event for everyone. So avoiding pain or eliminating pain is not the idea here. But the idea is to prevent pain from turning into suffering. And remember that we suffer the most in our imaginations, not in reality. So rumination of the negative thoughts and identifying with those thoughts is what causes the suffering, not the thought itself. The thought itself is a meaningless concept that we've created, um, and it's a fixation, usually, if it's a negative one, um, that fixation and rumination of that thought, and we identifying with that thought, or thinking the thought is going to hurt us in some way, that is exactly what creates the suffering, not the thought itself. The thought itself is harmless. Uh, because it's it's not real of course it doesn't actually exist it's in the mind it's a concept only so so the way out of this so the way out of this suffering loop if you will is to stop fighting it and state the objective facts of reality just state the reality sit with it look at it and say and there's nothing else there there's no and you can put a period at the end of the thought because that thought only continues to make us suffer if we keep thinking about it. <laughs> so the, the way out of the suffering loop is to ask the thought, welcome the thought. Um, this is the whole concept of having tea with Mara. You, 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 you can Embrace would be a stretch. That's for advanced practitioners to embrace your pain, but you can at least allow it to be there. You don't have to approve of it, but you can allow it to be there and accept it wholeheartedly. You can totally, completely, and radically accept it. And that's the idea. You can use radical acceptance to recognize and acknowledge, not approve, but not attempt to resist or fight reality as resistance does not change the reality. It doesn't alter the state of reality. So resistance is futile. And you can feel anxious or fearful while being objectively safe at the same time. So always remember that. You can feel anxious and fearful inside. So your internal state can be one of fear while the objective reality is that you are in fact safe. I have found no better and more effective uh, tool than DBT. It would be great if more people knew about DBT, frankly, because I think, in my opinion, I think everyone can benefit. Of course, these skills, like anything else, um, you have to apply them. It's not good enough to learn them. And that's something that I still struggle with in full transparency. I don't always apply the skills. Um, I sometimes default to 
uh, self-destructive behavior patterns. I do. So I'm struggling still, but it's a day-to-day -day, uh, work um, and it's practice. And when I do apply the skills uh, when I need them, they are extremely effective. Um, the key, of course, obviously, is to apply them. And I always say that, that knowledge is not power, applied knowledge is power. So I, you know, taking my own advice, I take things day by day, one day at a time, and um, doing my best and trying to uh, continue on that path and uh, making, I'm making extraordinary improvements, but I am a work in progress. So I will, um, I will answer any questions if you have any, if I'm able to answer them in the comment section below, although I'm not an expert in the field of DBT. Um, I am a um, serious practitioner of this and I am an advocate of this type of therapy. I hope this was helpful or useful to you in some way. I wish you the best of luck and thank you for being here. Thank you as always for watching.